few months back, I embarked on a drill charging station that kind of looked like this, and I kind of <laughs> at it. So I decided to build something a little bit newer and a little bit greater, so. I had a bunch of three quarter inch scrap plywood laying around the shop that was in really great shape. To avoid ripping the pieces down at the table saw, I decided to work with the dimensions I had and let that dictate the size of the drill station. Once I got the backing and sides cut out, it really started coming together in my head. Taking the pieces over to the Craig jig, I drilled pocket holes on the back side of the station. If you don't already have one of these, I'd really recommend getting one. They're well worth the money. I'll link it down below. When drilling the Craig screws into the sides, you want to preset the drill to a power setting around 7 to 9. This helps with over torquing the screw into the wood and splitting the plywood. I purposely made the length greater than 16 inches so that I could drive screws on the center of the studs behind the drywall in my shop. I decided to go with two shelves here because I wanted to store some sandpaper and other miscellaneous things here. You can obviously change it however you'd like. I always end up labeling the front so I don't turn things around during the assembly process. It helps keep me straight. Instead of rounding over the shelves, I wanted to go with a chamfer that I thought would look pretty neat. Striking two lines from the bottom, I measured four inches up where the bottom of the shelf would sit level. I didn't bother gluing the shelves in because I knew it would be pretty strong and I could always change the height at a later date. I cut these dividers out and spaced them somewhat equally. I always mess this up so if you have a simple way to make these even, let me know down in the comments below. To get the side pieces to stay, I added glue and let it set up overnight. This should be plenty strong enough. I really need to build a miter station. I cut all the holders and did a quick sanding that knocked off all the burrs and splinters. Adding a little bit of glue will help keep the holders from flexing back and forth and eventually coming out of square. Always drill before screwing into the plywood. I made the mistake of not pre-drilling and had some cracking because of it. I live in Virginia Beach and the weather was really nice so I decided to take the piece outside and started sanding at 120 then finishing it with 220. Kyle you really need to buy this sander. To give that fancy impression that I used wooden dowels, I put some wood putty to fill the holes in. If you don't have the filler you can always use wood dust and glue, that works just fine. There must be dog food in here because Tucker was really in love with this stuff. I finally got to the branding and I really love this custom brand that I ordered from Gearheart Industries. They're quick to respond to your design and they stand by the product, which is always good. I'll link them down below. I wanted the power cores to run out of the side of the station, so I cut a hole a bit bigger than the plug. Eventually I'll want to make a slick French cleat system, but for now, two screws drilled into a stud will work just fine. I'm really glad I was able to revisit this project, because it really does serve a great purpose with organizing my one and only drill. 
To build great projects, a well-organized shop is crucial. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. I really enjoy meeting and hearing from new people. As always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.